Hi, good morning. Welcome to AARP's Art with the Armory. I'm Ann Hales with AARP Alabama. This is our second show with the Armory Learning Arts Center in Montgomery, Alabama. Each month we'll feature an artist or a program from the Armory. Last month we created these beautiful batik flower sack towels uh, that used regular school glue and paint. They're beautiful. Yeah, you can find that video on our Facebook page and YouTube page. Uh, they're posted there and you can go back to them as often as you need to. Uh, today's episode will also be available if you need to refer back to it. And please share these with others because these are some fun things to do. Again, brought to you by the Armory Learning Arts Center in Montgomery, Alabama. During this pandemic, it's a challenge to stay connected with others. We hope that this painting class and AARP's other opportunities will give you information you need help you stay connected and have some fun in the process. To find out about our other programs, visit aarp.org slash AL. That's our website, aarp.org slash AL, and it lists all the events that we have throughout the state. And look for our events on Facebook as well. We'll post live events a week ahead like this and live events on Facebook at least a week ahead. Um, and you can go to that, that post on Facebook and click that you're interested or want to get reminders and it will send you a reminder. Just click on the link. Right now, I'd like to introduce our guest. We have with us um, uh, Mary Parker and Mary Parker is the, the artist and who from the Armory who has created this lovely beach scene and, and will show us how to do that today. And we said it's a way to bring the beach home. Maybe you, maybe you can't get out and get to the beach this summer. Um, and right now it is really hot. You might not want to do that, but you can bring that home to you um, in one of your paintings. So um, Mary, it is so nice to have you here with us. Well, I appreciate you having me. This has been a lot of fun and I've learned a lot from doing this. I mean, this is all new for all of us, I can tell you. So we're, we're, we're having a really good time doing this too. Tell me a little bit, and I know it is in the video, but a little bit of your background. You taught, you taught art for a, for a long time in the well, Montgomery I, schools or different places? I have been in the Montgomery public school system since 1967. Okay. And I've been retired for 10 years. In the last 20 years, I was at the Arts Magnet in Montgomery, and I had a fifth grade self-contained class, but our classes went to the Arts Wing and worked the arts with the artists. It was really a, a fun thing to do. Yeah. And the lesson that we're going to look at today is something that I was thinking about for adults, but also it's something I could have taught my fifth grade. In fact, I did teach my fifth grade, um, and it's just a method for getting a painting going and seeing what you can come with up with and everybody will have something different. So I don't think you're going to come up with what I came up with because that would not be your personality probably. So, so you said, and this can be done with children and with adults. And, and I know I, I, I am a messy painter. Um, I'm not an artist. I don't mean it that way, but when I've tried to do something, I'm messy. This, this is using acrylic paint. So um, I, people probably need to wear something that, that, they can get paint on and, and maybe spread newspaper out or something or do it somewhere where if they spill, it's okay. Especially if sure. they're with working with um, younger children too, I guess. Right. Um, it will stain your clothes. So put on something that you're not going to get upset with yourself or your children. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think what we'll do, and now we have Margaret Barber, who is with the Armory Learning Arts Center, and uh, Danae Morgan uh, are, are with us now on Facebook, and they will be posting with us and, and, and watching. So if you have any questions throughout this video, please feel free to ask them. Uh, we will stop. We've got several different segments, and so we'll play one segment and then stop to ask, uh, to answer any questions that you might have. So please post those in the, in, um, as we're going along in the chat. Um, now, so what we're going to do is I will go ahead, Mary, and play the first video. And um, uh, then we'll stop and, and you can respond to it. Okay? That's great.
is Mary Parker. I am a retired school teacher of a very long time. The last 20 years I spent, uh, that I was teaching, I spent Carver in the Arts Magnet. And so this activity that we're gonna do right now is something that my students could have done. Maybe you would like to do this for some of your homeschool. Are you doing that this summer? Or just for the adults. You can teach this to any adult. I'm gonna give you some pointers on how to construct a painting and you can take notes on it and then you can become the teacher. You ready? Okay, first of all, some supplies. You can have canvas boards in any size that you want to pay for. <laughs> they are very expensive at our local hobby center, but some are just flat like so, which you can put in a frame, and some are covered. So you can just put a nail in the wall and hang them up. Saves you a little money right there. There's also backs on the back of these, places where you can put all your information. Um, so that, that's something you can paint on. You could also use a piece of plywood, you could use wood, you can use paper. I heard uh, Bob Ross on television the other day said that he practiced on paper bags from the grocery store. So, you know, anything. I just love to paint. And after a while, I'm kind of running out of things to do besides the walls in my house. Um, okay, so uh, brushes. You can get very inexpensive, pretty good brushes for, these four brushes are smaller brushes and they were $3.29 compared to this one brush that I just bought for $8.99. So you gotta look for deals and go in the children's department and you can find some good stuff. Here's also a bunch of brushes uh, that I bought. And on the back, print on the back, which is a good thing to do. And it tells you all the, all the different shapes of the brushes, the sizes, sizes, and the names of the brushes. And this pack was only, I think, $8 or $9, and you get a whole lot of brushes in there. So your paint supplies are white, burnt sienna, which is a really pretty brownie, reddish kind of brown color, um, ultramarine blue, which is, it has a little reddish tint to it. It's, tends towards the purple. There are other colors of blue that tend to go in another direction. And this is yellow ochre, which is an earth color, which is yellow, of course. Just a little bit, not quite so bright. So we have those. Aren't you gonna need a brush or two? You need a container to put some water in so you can wash off your brushes. You need something to put your paint on. Okay, so this is called a palette. This is called paper plate, paper plate with paint on it. <laughs> That's always a good thing to use. That's one of my favorites. Okay, you can also use parchment paper, like you cook, you know, you bake your cookies on, if you have that around the house. You can use that, just pull some off and maybe anchor it down with a little tape so it doesn't curl up on you. And paper towels to dry off your brushes with. And now you're pretty much ready to go. I have a little teeny piece of, a little bit of black in case we draw some birds on these pictures. Um, but this is, um, these, these also work real nice. They're craft paints. You probably have some around your house. They, they work nice. And they're very inexpensive. This, this, go back to this, this could be about, oh, let's say between five and eight dollars. And this could be about 75 or 80 cents. Okay, so let's see if we have any comments or questions. Not so far, not yet. Was there anything, Mary, that you remember from that first segment that people need to make note of as they're... Um, I think they just need to look around for a good deal on their supplies, especially if they're just getting started, because um, later on, if you're really into it, you can get into more pricey things. But it's right. nice to have something that you know, just making a big investment for, and then you can enjoy what you're doing. If they buy the the, the 
how do you store your paint? So if they want to use these, they're, they're not going to use all of it on one painting. How do you store it so that they um, last as long as they can? Is there well, anything special? You I think you ought to just put out a little tiny bit of paint at a time. And then when you get through, you can cover it with a piece of tin foil or something like that. Some people like to put it in the freezer to store it. Okay. Uh, but if you don't have too much left on your palette, you know, you don't have a big problem with the waste. A lot okay. of waste. That's on the palette, but the, the actual bottles, do they, do they go bad or do they stay good for a long time? The they bottles? stay good for a real long time. Okay. If you, you got to keep the top on though, because they'll dry yeah. up. <laughs> yes, I'm prone not to do. Okay. All right. So we will go into the next video. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do today is paint either a landscape or a seascape. The sea would be about the water in the ocean and the land could be like your fishing pond, up at the lake, um, anything in that direction. So I've got these colors out today for this seascape. And you think you don't know how to paint it, but when I get through with you, you're going to know exactly how to paint this. So the first thing we're going to do is take our canvas and we're going to decide whether we want to have a lot of sky or a lot of land. So not straight down the middle because that makes it not quite as interesting. So I'm putting a line across here and your horizon should be, be uh, perfectly straight or else it will look more like you're having a tidal wave. Um, okay, so here we go. I'm going to paint the sky first and this is what you're going to do. Another thing I want you to do is pay attention to what I'm telling you so that you can take notes on how to do this kind of thing. Making the horizon either up or down is an important step in painting a nice little picture. about where we're going to put our horizon which eventually is going to be perfectly straight so the first thing you always do is take your your um, lightest color and put just the tiniest touch of paint in it because if you take the darkest color and put paint in it it's just going to not work quite right okay so i'm going to go down here to the horizon first and that's too dark so let's get a little bit lighter And we're going to mix up a bunch of paint that's the same color because if you don't when you come back it may be a different color and then that's then you have to start over okay now you may be wondering where the clouds are but they have not come into the equation yet all right so now we're going to make a little strip that is a touch darker Now you see when I made up a little extra there, see how it turned a different color. It's not exactly what I just told you to do. So we'll have to blend this in and make this look like the sky. It's gonna be dimensional. All right, now we're gonna make some more up in here and this is gonna be a little bit darker. Okay. Don't be afraid to just scrub your paint around. You can turn your camera any way you want to, to get to the parts that you need to get to. Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna let this rest for just a second. We want a little bit of this down here on the horizon a little bit lighter because then that makes it show up the way it needs to do. Okay, so now we've gotten to this part, which might be all of this right here when we get through. Great. Well, Mary, do you, um, uh, yes, ma'am. With, with that painting, the horizon, it, it, it's up to you, I guess, how much horizon or how much of the sky to paint and, and whatever you can determine that. Right. And you can, you can also, all right, let me say this, uh, doing the whole sky blue, then you don't have to paint in the cracks after you put the cloud on, or you might have changed your color some. So if you get it all done at one time, it makes your life a lot easier. So if you want to paint a lot of clouds, move your horizon down. If you wanted to paint a lot of water, move your horizon up. It makes it more interesting than put it, putting it half and half. Okay. And you can use the same method uh, to paint, you know, trees or, or ground or something else. So it just gives you a method of, to do your painting. Okay. And is there a thickness or anything that people should be aware of? You, you, you said scrub it on at some points. Is it fairly thin um, as, as that first layer? Or, or this, just... That layer was not very thin because um, if you put too much water on your brush, you will have bare spots on your canvas that you can't paint over right away. So okay. for what we were doing on this demonstration, the paint was pretty thick. Okay. Um, okay. And it's important, I think, to know that at the horizon, the the um, colors are much lighter because you it's far away, number one. But also, you have if it's in the city or something, you have a lot of pollution that makes a haze kind of down there at the horizon. And then at the top is better if it's dark because it's coming close to you. It'd be like the sky right above you. Okay. And you okay. can continue to build your layers a little bit. It, it, is that correct you can it, it, oh sure to, to create what you the color that you want right sure because that you know everything is relative as soon as you change one color you can change some other colors you could do the same method and make a sunset um you know you can just do whatever you want to with it i pick okay. those those colors because they are very simple they are muted a little bit and you can make so many color combinations with those five colors okay Sounds good. We will move on to the next video. Okay. And then you want to just keep working on your sky till you get it looking like you want it to look. Don't be afraid to mix up some paint. Okay. Now we're going to let this part dry just a tad. And then we're going to come back and work on the clouds. So we'll go down here to the oh, bottom half of the canvas, bottom third of the canvas. Okay, so we're the, um, we're the ocean or the beach colors. We're gonna make the sky colors. Let's start something like this. Can you see that? Okay. Okay, so right in here, we're straightening up the horizon. And then we're putting this little light strip right here to show where the sky and the water are going to come together. Yeah. Now we're going to work on putting something down here. Okay, so what do you want your beach to look like? This is up to you. It can be lots of sand down here. You can have sand dunes. You can have, right here, we got some sand dunes over here. You get that? All right, sand dunes up in here and over in here. There's the horizon and we're gonna work on some clouds. Now, when this started out, it was just plain like this and then we fancied it up some. So, all right, I think I'm just gonna make just plain, sort of like just some sand over in this area. 
And I'm gonna use some of the white, a touch of the burnt sienna, which is really, really pretty. It makes some nice looks for the sand and a touch of the yellow ochre. And then, more white in here. And cover up this area with this. For sandy kind of colors. Okay. Now we need to have uh, some water. So Let's take a little of the yellow ochre. And a little bit of white. And just a touch of this blue. And that's going to give you a little greenish kind of color. And if you've ever been to Gulf Shores, you know, the, it's the emerald water. So you get a little green down there. In Destin, you get more of the uh, bluish green. All those change colors. All right, so we're going to come across here and see if we like any of that. And I will tell you this, if you don't like it when you're putting it on the canvas, you are not gonna like it when you get finished. So, decide what you like. And um, let's see. Okay, let's get some of this going on in here. Yeah. This is gonna run out here to like the deeper blue it's going to be up here close to the sky. So, this could be a nice little wave about to happen out here. And then you decide how you want your water to come. Is your water going to come in? Beneath the beach, or is it just going to be one of those lazy afternoons where nothing is going on? And you can decide that. And then you're going to get sort of a line where your waves might go. And it's okay to make them rough because you know waves don't always come in smooth. See? Okay, I think we're back on. Oh, good, good. Yeah. I wasn't sure I was looking at something. Um, um, that looked like a lot of fun. And well, it was. Let me, can I just say this? The, yes, um, please. Okay, my art teacher was Charles Shannon, who was pretty famous in Montgomery and a really wonderful teacher. And he always said, if you mix your colors up and they're ugly, when you paint them on the canvas, they'll still be ugly. <laughs> And if you have a real bad composition, <laughs> it's going to be ugly when you draw it on the canvas. So mix up some pretty colors. And that yellow ochre plus the blue is just like mixing bright yellow and blue and getting a green. So it's a, but it gives you a softer color. Okay. So that, okay. Okay. That's good. So mix up your colors on the side, look at them and see, because it's, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, we will then move on to our, they, we've had some comments um, uh, from people and they've said that that um, you teach acrylic, but you also do some beautiful quilting and um, uh, <laughs> some, some collage work too. So I thought I'd mention that for anybody who takes a class at the Armory Learning Arts Center. Let me go back to the next video. Let's see, that was three. And then down here, you can use a little more of your beach color and a little sand. A little yellow ochre for your sand. Just mix those up. And here comes some. A layer of this. Notice we're working in layers now. See, we still have our layer of blue up here in the sky, which looks like nothing, but it's gonna get better. Right? Okay. 
So now we'll let some of this dry and then we'll go up into the clouds. And one way to make the clouds is to make circles. And so you make circles. Let's put a little baseline on our clouds. Something darker on the bottom of your cloud. And it's nice to have a little color in your white too, so it'll give it something else to do. Okay. And so we're gonna have cumulus clouds because these, these are what you get at the beach a lot of times, cumulus clouds. And so here we're going to come, circle, 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 unless they're getting active. Maybe this is late afternoon, the temperature is changing. And you can make your, you can make your clouds go any way you want to. <laughs> because of my helper. <laughs> Thank you. Got a little more white going on here. Uh, we do not want our clouds to look like cotton balls. So we've got those going on. Right. So now we need to go back down here to our, this area where it's getting a little bit drier and put in some sand. And what I love to do is just slide this paint around. It feels so nice. Yep. And then we're gonna go back up to the clouds. And um, I think we needed some more paint on this blue up here at the top. Oh, let's see here if we can get some. The darker this spot is up here at the top, the more it will look like it's coming towards you. And if you put too much water on your brush, you will get bare spots in your canvas. So kind of practice on that for a few years and you'll be right on target. Okay, so now that, that makes that look better. Can you see that looks better? Does that show up better? Okay. All right, now we're gonna throw a little white in here. And get down here on the bottom. And let's see what that is. Let's see what goes. Okay. Now see how that starts to make that look like it's 3D, like this is coming close. This, this that's very dark would be right above your head. Okay. Now, think of what you could do at the beach. <laughs> uh -huh. I heard what you were telling me there. It's hard to believe. Okay. Um, so now we've got some water going on. All right. And this is another layer. So you can, you can add different things to your picture. Okay. I, I do have one question on that one. When you were making the clouds, uh, the cumulus clouds, you put a little color in it so that it's not just stark white. Was it, did it was you a, take blue? No, I put a little yellow ochre, I think, in this one. Or you could put blue or you could, you know, if you were doing a sunset and you're making the clouds, you would put some of the sunset colors, just a touch to give it a bottom, a base for the cloud and make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. I did notice that there was a little bit of a color and that way that it stood out because you saw the different layers of the cloud more when you put more white on top. Right. Edison. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, we have. And, and another thing, if you make your cloud a little bit gray or a little bit darker and then you put your highlights in, they'll show up more. You know, right. when you put the light color against the dark, that will make that show up more. So um, that's kind of up to the person. Okay. If you do it with little children, they love to 
jazz it up real good. <laughs> yes, they yes. do. Yes, they do. Yes. Okay, we will move on to the next one. So it's four. So, well, and now we're going to go back up to the top because their clouds are a little bit more dry. We're going to add some highlights. So let's play like the sun is coming in over here. And we'll put some highlights up here. And you can blob up your paint. You can make it 3D looking. Don't put puffy paint on it, but well, you might want to, if you want to. Now just think, if you're at home and you're entertaining those grandchildren, you could do the sky one day, you could do the water one day, you can come back and add stuff to it, and you would have uh, some good entertainment. Okay, let's see, that's is that showing up? Good, all right. Now, you might want to throw in, some of you said you'd like to go out in the sailboat. So you might want to throw in a sail, which is nothing but, let me get around this way, a triangle, like so. Oh, let's put some color on there because it's not going to show up. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. There goes a triangle. And a little bit more of a triangle over here. And then we can take a little of our burnt sienna and put about on your boat. Okay. And then you can add some little waves to the boat. Okay. If you want to um, make some grass or some, well, you can make some shells. You've got a wonderful color for shells. This burnt sienna and white makes a beautiful shell color. I just did one, kind of a humorous one, that was called The Beaches Are Closed and it had all the shells that watched up on the beach where the people hadn't picked them up. <laughs> There's not anybody at the beach. <laughs> so, you know, you can throw some of those in. Nice little pink shells. You can throw some more sailboats in. You can do just about anything you want to. So, that pretty much is everything I know about this. <laughs> Uh, oh, let me show you one more thing. Okay, this is this exactly the same process. Blue for the sky, uh, some brownish burnt sienas and stuff for the bottom. Then come back and come back and do the, the sky, and then go in and mix up some green this time with some of the colors that you have on your palette. I don't think green's going to be one of the colors that come, but I hope you're going to get interested and paint lots of pictures. And then you just go with that. And I'm going to show you how to do one more thing, and I'm going to stop talking. Okay, so if you want to make the um, the reeds, get your little brush with a tiny tip, and the same thing for birds, and you just put it real, real loose. You can do reeds like this, make this more of a greeny color by adding a little color to it. These could be sea oats. I might have to put this down, it's going to drip. Okay, and do some of those. And then if you want to make a bird flying over your area, you can do some Vincent Van Gogh birds. He just made little shapes like so. Sort of like a V with a little wing span there. You can do some of those. This. All right. Oh, the last, the best part. You get to sign your name. You have to think of how you're going to make your um, signature. So it always goes in the bottom right. And you think of something that you want to do for you because when you're famous and you're in a museum, I want to come by and know it was you. Thank you for being with us.
Mary, thank you. That was so much fun. And and again, anybody, if you have any questions, that that's the end of the video portion. If you have any questions about what Mary did, um, please post them in the uh, chat. Um, Mary, that was great. And again, you you have been painting for many years, and you make this look like it's like it's easy, but I know it's not. But um, it, it looks like a lot of fun. And I did notice that this painting is not real large. It's what, eight by 10? Eight or by 10. Like mm -hmm. And then um, I had seen one that, that I think Danae Morgan had, had shown me from the armory that was smaller, like a five by seven or maybe even smaller than that. And that was really a nice painting too. So well, they can you. make it any size, any I guess. Any size. And if you're working with little children, make it big because they like big. <laughs> That's a good they point. like for everything to be big. That's so, a good point. Um, you know, because I think this activity would be good if you had, if you were homeschooling uh -huh. or if you were a grandmother that had to entertain little people. Um, you know, it's something to do. It's something different to do. Since our arts are kind of, art supplies are kind of cut down, you know, in school. Right. Um, this would be, something that they might enjoy doing because they probably have not done it before. And then they can mix colors and things like that. And so. it is amazing what, what children can do. Oh, it is. And their creativeness. And, and, and also for, for anybody of any age, because uh, uh, you can find your creativity at any time. My, my mother discovered her painting skills when, when she was in her sixties, I believe. Yeah. And so it's it's and since a lot of us are retired now, there's no excuse for these people not to get busy and paint a few pictures. We well, you know, and this is a great time for people to explore and be creative. It's it's good for our, our mental health, our brain health. That's right. To, to try to do new things and bring out that creativity a little bit. So thank you again so much for doing this and thank you so much to um Margaret um, Barber, who really helped do these videos, and um, uh, she's with the uh, Armory Learning Arts Center and uh, has worked nonstop with me to uh, or nonstop just to do these. Uh, next month, I hope that you'll stay tuned because next month we're actually not doing um, a painting. This time we're going to be doing yoga, the art of yoga, which is another program that they have at the Armory. And um, we'll show you a video uh, with that, but um, we'll also talk about the benefits of yoga and, and who can do yoga and the different kinds of things like that. So um, I hope that you will join us next month. I believe that's August 21st, uh, but we'll be posting that in Facebook as well and on the AARP.org forward slash AL website you'll see all of our events there also on august 6th we're starting a music series every thursday night beginning at seven o'clock on facebook you'll hear local uh, singer songwriters from across the state very talented artists uh, presenting their music from home so um, please join us thursday nights beginning in august and we also have a brain health um, a brain health teletown hall that will be on august 7th so please take a look at our website at arp.org forward slash al um, you can google us on on uh, google arp alabama and you can find us on facebook we'll post all of these events on facebook plus these videos are live or will be will live not live right now but they will live on our facebook page and our youtube page and the video is also on the uh, YouTube page of the um, Armory Learning Arts Center. So again, I can't say enough about the Armory. It is a wonderful place. I hope everybody checks out their programs and their programming. I see that Margaret said that their fall programming will start before too long. So I hope everybody um, everybody checks that out. So thank you again. Please, please let everybody else know this video will be on our Facebook page for quite a while. And on YouTube, you can come back to it and and see how to paint this beautiful scenery. Again, Mary Parker, this has been wonderful. Thank you. You're so, so sweet. And I want to say that the Armory is the most pleasant place to be involved with. It's just always got a great atmosphere. It's safe. It's clean. It's 
just nothing but good thoughts down there. You're correct. You're correct. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day, everybody.